Hi friends, and welcome back to Costa MUA. Uh, so today we've done something just a little bit different than normal. As you can tell in the photo, that ain't me. Uh, that is actually my new friend. She was in town from the UK filming a new TV series. Actually, not a new TV series, but she was filming a season of a TV series that she will be taking part of in a really cool character that I'm very excited that she's going to be debuting. Um, Natalie was actually also on a arc of Coronation Street, which I believe is the longest running TV show in, in history? In history? Somebody correct me, I'm not sure. I think it's uh, in all of history. Um, Natalie is a wonderful, wonderful person, as you will see. She and I uh, met on set, and we got along right away. Um, she's a wonderful soul, and I'm so thankful to her for, for being a part of this. Now, the products that you're going to need for this look at, uh, itself, for the mouth, is um, the Mayron Paradise Aqua Paints, the Viseart, um, Viseart Eyeshadows in Neutral and also Editorial 07, and the uh, Makeup Forever Artist Pencils. I, I believe that's it. Yeah, I believe those are the only three that I used. Really? Yeah, I guess so. Those are the only three products that I used in the uh, mouth itself, which is interesting. Um, so without further ado, why don't we go ahead and uh, show you this look. See you afterwards and chat soon. <laughs> Natalie, Natalie, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Natalie Gamedi. I've been having a fabulous afternoon having my makeup done by this talented man. And I believe we are now taking it a bit darker, a bit deeper. Yeah, we're going to be doing a Halloween look now. So um, I've obviously done a face for a different video, which you will see later on in the year. It's a beauty look that we also change into a night look as well. But from this point, because it's Halloween and Halloween comes first, we're going to create a whole new creature, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm out of my face. <laughs> Pretty much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mouth here with a, a long tongue and it's going to be a bit of an illusion because I'm actually going to make the mouth go around down. This will be the bottom jaw here. And it'll be coming out from inside of you and it'll look like the mouth of whatever is in you is coming out. This creature is ripping itself out of you. It's kind of gross, kind of awesome. I feel like that several times a week too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I have created a little bit of a sketch here. It's very, very, very rough, just to give me an idea of what I need. Uh, so for those of you who ask, yes, I do like to use the jumbo eye pencil to block out my shapes. This is exciting for me because... Um, yes? Because um, in England we don't really celebrate, to be, celebrate Halloween to the extent that you guys do. Right. In America and North America. Although I'm referring back to my sketches often, I'm still being pretty free with my design and I'm letting uh, what's happening on the body inform me. So I think the best thing to do right now is to start with my Mayron. Mayron. Aqua paints. Wow. Yeah. That looks like um, a kid's painting palette, you know? When yeah. You, like the fun. Yeah. It kind of is, um, and that's one of the reasons I love using it. It's also really, really versatile. Um, you can use it for eyeliner. Really? Colored eyeliner, you can, it's amazing stuff. Um, people are always asking me, how do you get those colors so bright? Yeah. Um, the great thing about this is, depending on how much water you use, it looks like a watercolor. Sure. So you can get really thick and really light as well coverage. Oh my god, I'm a little bit nervous about this. I haven't done one of these paints on another person before. Really? Other than Halloween, you know. Oh. All right. I like to use bold shapes and colors at this point just to give me a good foundation to start with. All oh, right. So what I have to take into effect right now, or into account right now, is this line here to line up with this line. Meanwhile, these two lines, because there's a collarbone here and it comes around, you want to take that into account. So. You're going to end up with a round semicircle here, and you're going to have to cheat around this collarbone to make this and this line up perfectly. So, at this angle, I can see when she looks straight ahead, this line and these two lines are now lined up. But when I look at them from here, they've got very weird shapes going on. So you have to keep that in mind. I always get people asking, how do you make things look 3D? And that's really mm -hmm. it, is just keeping it into in mind 
the lines and making sure that everything's lined up. It's also shading. It's mostly yeah. shading. Which is a talent in itself. Yeah, well, what a lot of people think is that um, shading is variations of the same color. For instance, if you, if they were shading this, they would use a darker red or they would use a pink or mm. something along those lines. In fact, what you would use is a purple in here because um, colors of shadows differ. There's always different colors in, in things. Right? It's like looking at snow. snow. Snow itself is white, but when you look at snow blanketed over a large field, there's a blue in it, there's yellow in it. Sure. And that's what gives it its definition. At this point, I realized that I had made a mistake in the design of the tongue. It was twisting a little too much. Um, so I went ahead and changed it. It's also really important to keep in, in mind the shape of the body and how that affects your painting uh, for the viewer. So uh, I really do recommend stepping back, taking a look at the perspectives, um, and judging how you need to change your design. Now, the great thing about this part is, again, you don't have to be 100% precise. And I say that because um, what defines the white here is actually going to be the black, and we're going to do that very last. So don't, if you make a tiny little mistake, don't freak out. Make a big one freak out. Make a big one. one. Yeah. Exactly. She knows. You know. <laughs> so a lot of people are probably wondering why I'm not fixing all of these lines and whatnot. Um, very simple reason is I'm a person who works in layers. That's why my paints take so long. Um, so I'm not worried about them right now. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm blocking to see the shape, the color, the effect, um, and I'm growing the paint so that as it builds, it becomes more realistic or more graphic. I haven't decided which way I'm gonna go just yet. Painting in layers does take quite a bit more time and it is laborious, but uh, the payoff is really worth it because it gives a new dimension uh, and really brings the, the painting to life. Wow, it's suddenly just popping out. You're starting to see it, mm -hmm. right? It's funny, with all makeups, even beauty makeups, there's always a moment where it looks like total garbage. I call it the ugly duckling phase. Mm -hmm. And it's always the point where if I'm painting somebody, they always want to see it right mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And it, there's always a slight panic and I have to say, don't worry about it, trust me, I know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden it just pops. Yeah. So it's at this point where you have to decide, and you can decide with your model, whether or not you want this to be more graphic, more realistic, do you want it to be scary, do you want it to be kind of cutesy, what do you want? Oh, this is your domain. So the reason I say that is because uh, the roundness of the teeth changes the effect. Mm. Obviously shark teeth are more menacing, so if you want more of a cartoon feel, I would recommend rounding the teeth and perhaps spacing them out a little bit further away from each other. Okay, now we get to do some shading. Speaking of shading. I'm gonna start painting the highlights of the gums where the teeth enter the gum line uh, with the Mayron Paradise Aqua Paint in white. So, um, we're going to go back to the busy art. We're going to start a little bit of shading in the upper gum line here. Uh, and I'm going to start with the, um, probably going to start with this mauve, to be honest. And that's going to be our in-between. By in-between, I mean the first color of three in the shadows I'll be using. What was your favorite part about doing titles? I think it's really encouraged me to, um, step up as an actor and take my power. Oh yeah? Not like massively, like it's been a real challenge in that way because of the way um, Mercy is in the show, it's necessary, you know, and I had some fantastic directors that I've worked with. Um, and, you know, being a show as big as it is and, and, and being a, a world that is well loved as it is, you know, there's a lot of close guarding about the story and the character. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sometimes as an actor you don't even get to know until after the fact, after you've filmed or, you know, how it's going to be. Even after you film? Mm, put, put together, you know. That's interesting. Um, but the one thing I've taken away is how to really take the floor. 
Um, well, one thing that was very clear was you were a powerhouse. I was even told, <laughs> actually, when I first came in, um, watch this actress when she's on screen, she's, she's badass, was the oh, word that people used. that's very nice. I think I, I feel like I've learned that on this because, because the character does have such a presence. And, mm. and the way it's written in the script, you sort of go, oh wow, she just has this presence. Right. You're gonna be like, gosh, this is a great interview for Titans. So I'll just use this. <laughs> you totally could. <laughs> so I've used a mauve as my lightest shadow, shadow color, a purple as my medium, and then a blue as my dark shadow color. And the reason I did that, again, is to get a little more definition, a little more roundness and shape to the colors, and also to give it a little more life. I had so much fun doing the teeth. I started off with the yellow uh, and then moved into an orange for light refraction. Underneath the tooth, I also used a dark umber orange with the taupe for shadows. Uh, remember, you don't have to be precise at this point. This can be a lot of fun because the edges of the teeth will be defined by the black. So be messy if you want. There's no rule saying that you have to be very, very tidy right now. Once you've laid down all the color, go ahead with your Mayron white and uh, paint the whites of the teeth as well, just to give them a little more pizzazz, a little more shine. I started work on the tongue by painting the root with the Bizzyart eyeshadows in the mauve, purple, and blue colors as before, and also anywhere that there was a twist. A fun way to do taste buds is to use a Mayron Paradise Aqua Paint in white in very thin layers uh, and paint little white dots on top of each other. Okay, I'm going to leave the tongue alone for a hot second and I'm going to start doing these teeth. And again, from the Vizier, you do not need to load your brush with a ton of this product. It has a very high vehicle. Um, as you can see, I didn't load it up a lot and already the, the tooth is almost completely yellow. Yeah, it's a good pigment. Yeah, I said pigment. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I use the same color scheme for these teeth as I did for the top. That's a uh, yellow, uh, orange, burnt umber, taupe. Um, and then I used the Mayron Paradise Aqua Paint on top of that in white just to give the teeth a little more shape. Do you have any favorite films that you. Oh, God, that's horrendous. Right, yeah, that's it. Horrendous for watching things. Um, Are horrendous. <laughs> Do you like horror, slasher, thriller, comedy, drama? Yes, a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite genre to act in? Can you answer that? Uh, Probably not. No, actually, because it it doesn't it doesn't feel as though. Um, you're in a genre for me. Right. I'm sure there are actors who, you know, lean into that um, and are spectacular because of it. But for me, it's just kind of like, well, what's the truth in, in this scenario? Mm. You know, and you can tell if something's funny when it jumps off the page, right. you know, to you, or, or suddenly the way your worldview is finds it funny. You know, oh, I can find something in that, you know. Um, so I don't really sort of worry about the genres as such. Okay. Um, I have to say that I did um, an episode about two or three years ago, and I was quite open that I hadn't really ever been into sci-fi. Mm. Oh, well now look at you. But doing the job completely changed my respect and enjoyment of it. Right. Completely changed right. it. I absolutely loved that job. Um, and I loved how incredibly real you can make a world that's unreal. You know, and I think that's what's been nice to bring into Titans as well. Like I've enjoyed feeling more confident with that because of Doctor Who.
The Viseart uh, Neutral Palette has a beautiful taupe color that you can actually use to fill in brows for beauty looks. Check it out. Okay. This is his teeth, this demon, is he? Don't let me know. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking it's not high on his priority list. <laughs> so right now, in order to start the outline, I'm going to use a Makeup Forever, uh, color makeup, yeah, uh, color artist color pencil. Sorry, so it's the Makeup Forever artist color pencil, using it in black. Um, also, the I don't know if anybody is aware of this, but Makeup Forever has their own pencil sharpener that comes out with the finest point I have ever seen in my entire life. So if you can find it, get it. A really big tip I can offer here is if you want sharper teeth on your creature, I recommend while you're edging in a black pencil to really pay attention to the whites of the teeth on the very tips rather than the black edging. Um, if you watch the black edging, there's a tendency to round the teeth out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yeah. When you've done this work on yourself, do you find it hard to wash it off? Because it's like, I'm washing away my art. No. The, the only thing that sucks is that there's nobody else to enjoy. Yeah, it, you know? absolutely. So for somebody at home who's just trying this. So what I would recommend you do is, um, like I said, if you're right-handed, always, always work from the top left down to the bottom right. That way you're not dragging your hand across everything. Um, have a plan, have a sketch is a good way to cut down on time. Um, but I mean, it doesn't have to be a fantastical thing. You can get an idea of something if you sketch it out properly and you just shade it. Yeah. Um, so eyeshadows are really important. Use, um, use things that you have. You can definitely use things you have um, to make a look, but they don't have to be big. Halloween can be really easy and Halloween can be lots of fun. For me, I've always loved getting ready more than going out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I love to take my time getting ready for Halloween. If I do something, it's for hours and hours and hours and hours, and then I'm out for maybe two hours. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part about um, acting? I think allowing yourself to have your mind changed, to have your direction changed, mm -hmm. not being set in stone about your choices. Having the, putting the work in to your choices, but then allowing those choices to be completely sent in a different direction by another person who challenges your emotions, who challenges your choices, who, who keeps you present, you know. So you really love the work. Yeah, you yeah. You love the work of acting. That's amazing. There's, there's, no, there's no truer joy and uh, of being alive mm. when you're <laughs> because it's a reflection of life you know you make all the plans and then life changes your mind something happens that changes yeah. your mind or changes the way you have to approach something and when you work with another person you can rehearse all like at home but they might not react to what you've done to what you've said to how you've expressed the script yeah or the, the same scene way they may react in a completely different way to how you pictured it. So how are you going to react to that? How are you going to, more importantly, how are you going to respond? You know, are you going to let it floss to you? Or are you going to allow it to light up right. the work? Oh, that's interesting. I feel. So do you feel that you bring yourself to the character or does the character come to you? Both, there's, there's no, Every character that you take on 
normally when you book the work, you book the work because you brought your essence to the story, to mm. the character. If you've tried to be what you think the character is, then you don't get it. But if you bring an aspect of yourself, of your truth, of your experience in life to the character, then that's when it clicks. It clicks. It comes alive. Right. And the same thing happen, happens on set. If you bring all of your, every single one of your tricks and tools and and hope something goes a certain way, then you know you've got a long day. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, but if you, I love when a director whispers in your ear uh, a direction that completely changes the trajectory of the scene. Where you go, oh, right, I never thought of it like that. Oh, that's interesting, you know. Um, or another actor on set delivers on something so differently to how you expected. But all of a sudden you're so present and so in the moment because you're letting something affect you. Right. You know, you're letting that other person affect you and that's, that's to me the joy. Using the same mauve purple and blue from the Viseart Dark Matte palette, go ahead and shade the shadows in going into the body. Now I like to use the red-brown in the Viseart Neutral palette just to extend the tears and the folds of the skin a little bit more and just to give the, the tear itself a little more life, a little more um, damage, if you will. For the shadow of the tongue, I used the Viseart Neutral palette again, and I used the taupe color. It's a gray-brown color. When I swallow, it looks like the tongue's moving. Do it. I'm now using the Makeup Forever Artist Pencil in brown just to outline certain areas of the, um, the painting itself, just to pull it off of the, the canvas. Okay, one more detail, and then we're just about done. Using the Mehron Paradise Aqua Paint in white, you literally just have to layer um, little splotches of white on top of each other for a drool effect. It's that easy. That's a good point for the uh, body art side of it though, that water reflects backwards. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so you always see the reflection at the bottom and the opposite side of where mm -hmm. the light is coming from, um, but then it also hits the top and it's, it's water reflection is very different, and I still have to wrap my head around it. Mm. And especially um, because saliva is a different kind of viscosity, it also has its own rules. I oh, know, gross. One thing I can definitely tell you is that uh, the best way to learn how to paint water or saliva is to really observe. Watch videos and look at photos of water and saliva and see how the light moves in and around it. Try to mimic that with your paintbrush. Um, your best tool in your arsenal is your power of observation. A good example of that is the saliva that's being thrown off of the tongue. I wanted to convey a sense of um, movement and gravity, um, and the best way to do that is through the use of light reflection. So if you have a look, I use the light to um, show the saliva moving. How are you doing? Good, I'm just flaking a little bit. But... Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your patience. Oh gosh, it's fine. Now are you just being British it. polite? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. Um, thanks for making me look like the Antichrist. Well, you're very welcome. You know, I thought I'd bring it out in you. I have that <laughs> effect on most people. <laughs> I want to say fabulous, uh, but it's not quite, it's not quite covering, is it? It's incredible. Well, it's indescribable. It's indescribable. No, it's incredible. It's very clever. Oh, thank you. It's actually based on um, a look that I've seen quite a few times. 
Um, it's I, I've always wanted to do this. I'm excited I got to do it on you, actually. I'm really excited that, that this worked. It's, oh god, did it work? It's, it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> Yay! Okay, let's take some photos, shall we? I have to admit that this has become probably one of my favorite paints, uh, only because it does incorporate illusion and theatrical uh, and graphic art uh, in it. Uh, but there's this really cool 3D effect that um, that I really, really enjoyed doing just under the tongue. Uh, and of course, I got to do drool, which I love doing, as you all know. Uh, it's my new favorite thing. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed creating it. A uh, special thank you goes to Natalie, of course, who was such a great sport for sitting in my chair uh, to do three looks. We did, again, the bridal look, the evening look, and then the Halloween look. So thank you again, Natalie. Please come back anytime. Uh, so guys, without further ado, that is uh, the, the new look for Halloween 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or if you'd like to send me some recreations of your look, please do so down below in the comment section. Uh, or you can send me your photos via Instagram, at Costa, M-U-A. I love to look at your recreations or your inspiration. So please go ahead and send those to me. Um, we will be back soon with another video, so come back and check that out.